made all of these mistakes. <laughs> I'm definitely a repeat offender. Welcome back to the Stella Conley channel. Today we are talking about the seven mistakes to avoid when buying designer handbags. And I'm not even kidding, I've made these mistakes, learned from those mistakes, then remade these mistakes. It's like I don't learn. Designer handbags are expensive. I feel like we put so much time, so much effort and emotion like into purchasing these designer handbags. I always say to myself, never again, never again. And then it happens again. <laughs> so number one mistake to avoid when purchasing a designer handbag is avoid purchasing a bag that is too small. The small designer handbag trend is that, that train is just going and going and everybody is hopping aboard. I think small handbags are absolutely adorable. But let's look at exhibit A here. The Chanel round coin purse pouch, whatever you want to call this tiny little adorable little guy. He is so small, literally fits nothing. You think my phone fits in here? No, absolutely not. My six ring key holder? It fits in here, but when I try to zip it, it like has two points coming out. Card case? Nope, doesn't fit in there either. This bag is a bag that you can wear when the moon, the stars, the earth, the sun, Mars, all of those things align just right, and then I can wear this bag. It's literally a bag that I wear around to carry my air. I think to myself, you should just sell that bag. You should just get rid of that bag. But then I look at it, I'm like, it's so cute. I don't want to get rid of it. But I can definitely admit you were a mistake. I do have the Gucci Super Mini. This one at least fits my phone and my six ring key holder. And trust me, there's still room in here for AirPods and a lip product. So if you're gonna get a small bag, you know, they're adorable. Get a small bag, they're super cute. But get one that at least fits the essentials. Number two is thinking that you can only buy brand new designer handbags. Not true. The pre-love market right now is booming. I feel like there are websites popping up daily. My favorite is Fashion File. I've been a customer of Fashion File for probably about five years now. Exhibit B, I got this. Hermes Garden Party 30 off Fashion File. I saved $800 on this bag and it was listed in new condition. When I'm thinking of purchasing a handbag, I will look at the handbag brand new in the store and I'll also look at it on the pre-loved websites and then decide do I want it new or do I want to get it pre-loved. And if it's a good deal pre-loved and in great condition, this is gonna win most of the time. Number three is avoid buying trendy it bags. <laughs> buy what you love, honestly, buy what you love. But the thing is, I would wait to buy a trendy bag because when these trend bags come out, you, you're gonna see it everywhere. You're gonna see it all over Instagram. All the Instagram models are gonna be like, you know, sporting their brand new trendy handbags. But the thing is, most of the time those influencers are given those bags for free. You're seeing them get this awesome new it bag, but you're the one who's actually gonna go out and pay for it and they're getting it for free. So with trendy bags, I always say, stop, take a moment, think about it, maybe go to the store, try the bag on, make sure it even flows with, you know, your style, your energy, your body shape your height, everything, really get to know that bag before you invest into a trendy bag because that influencer is gonna love that bag this summer and then next summer it's gonna be a whole different bag and are you gonna just keep keeping up with the influencer? <laughs> They're getting those bags for free, don't keep up with them. Number four, don't impulse buy. We've all done it, we've all done it, I still do it. I don't remember what exhibit I am on, maybe exhibit C, but here you go. This was such an impulse buy. Though it is adorable, though it is shaped like a little heart, this bag was 100% an impulse bag for me and I've worn this bag a total of twice, 
two times. Can't bring myself to sell it because I just love looking at it. It's so cute. But it was such an impulse buy, I didn't even think really why I was buying it. I was just drawn to the cuteness. And this is a huge mistake because this is, a, this is an expensive bag. And for me to have worn it twice, it's not holding its value. So I know we get so excited when we walk into like the Fendi or the Louis Vuitton or the Chanel store. We're like blinded by the sparkles and the, and the leathers and the shiny hardware. But I'm telling you guys, if you see a bag that you absolutely fall in love with, that it is the most amazing bag in the world, I would stop. I would stop to think about it. A general rule for me when I see a bag that I want is I have to think about it for several weeks. I tell myself, you're not just gonna go buy that bag because you want it. You are gonna stop, you're gonna think about it for several weeks, maybe even months, and then if you still want it at the end of you know this like waiting period of like at least 30 days, then maybe you can consider buying it. But just, I mean, just seriously guys, it's when you make an impulse buy, <laughs> you are stuck with the consequences. Take a few days, take a few weeks, take a few months. Think about it before you dive in. That leads right into number five mistake to avoid is not doing your research. When you see that absolutely perfect bag, there isn't a bag perfecter in the world than that bag over there on that shelf. Get the name of that bag, get the price, get all the details on the bag, and then go home and do your research. When there is a bag that I want, when I'm like, oh my gosh, I love that bag, I want that bag, the first thing I do is go to YouTube. I watch as many videos as I possibly can on that bag. I see what that bag looks like on different body types. I see it in different lighting. I try to see as many of those what fits inside this bag so I can see what maybe I could be able to put in that bag. And then I try to look on the pre-loved market. I, you know, look on my Facebook groups. I even sometimes look on eBay. Most of the time I won't purchase on eBay, but I just try to get a general idea of what the price is brand new versus what the price point is pre-loved and in what condition they have it in the pre-loved market. The more research you do on a bag, really the better. And it kind of gets you excited. I feel like it gets you excited for that bag. It's like something that you want, but you're being super responsible about it and researching it and getting all the facts and information to lay out in front of you and be like, pros, 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 no cons. Let's go get it. Number six mistake to avoid is buying an outrageously colored bag. Let's bring in exhibit X. So I bought this Louis Vuitton Neverfull in several different colors here. This is a limited edition. Uh, this was part of the giant monogram uh, collection that launched in, I wanna say March. And I love this bag. This bag is gorgeous. It's got light purple, dark purple, lime green, black, white, orange then a lighter color orange. Lots and lots of colors to this bag. As much as I love this thing, it is very hard to wear this with any other color other than like a solid white, a solid gray, or like a solid beige. Even black kind of clashes with it, but I guess black would be fine too. Something to really think about when you are spending a lot of money on a you know designer handbag is if you get like a bright pink or a teal, really popular, the bright reds from Chanel. It's gonna have its limitations. You're not gonna be able to wear that bag with every outfit. You're not just gonna be able to grab it and go and wear it. Just definitely something to keep in mind when you are making a large, you know, luxury designer handbag purchase, just to be aware that a really outrageous colored bag is not going to match with everything. Number seven, and it is a mistake that you will live with forever. I'm <laughs> just kidding, I'm, so, I'm like so dramatic about it, but I swear I still remember making this mistake and it haunts me. Is selling your handbag, your current handbag, or one of your current handbags to fund another handbag, or just selling your handbag in general for the money. You have to be 1,000% sure 
that you want to sell that handbag before you actually sell that handbag. Basically, I bought a Chanel Boy small bag several years ago. I bought it in Paris at 31 Rue at, you know, Chanel's mothership, her, you know, the location of her shop where she lived, the famous staircase. And I had that bag, I don't even remember how long I had it. It must have been like, I, I want to say four months. And I just decided that I didn't want it. I was like, you know what? It's too expensive. I don't wear it enough. I, I don't really think I want this bag. Let me sell it. I sold the bag. I have literally regretted it every day since I sold that bag. I see that bag constantly. I miss that bag. I think about that bag. I talk about that bag with like my husband. Like, can you believe I sold it? He's like, wow, you really messed up. I'm like, thanks, honey. Thanks. Like literally, I don't know why I sold it. I don't know why I sold it. I'll never know why I did it. I swear, I'm, I'm me and I don't know why I did it. So my advice, and I've talked about this with my other friend who is obsessed with luxury handbags and she's like, every time I sell something, I see it everywhere. I miss the bag. When you sell them, they will live with, they still stay with you. They haunt you, I swear. I swear they haunt you. So if there is a bag in your collection that you're like, should I keep it? Should I sell it? I would honestly say to keep that bag for at least a year. Even if you don't wear it, keep it for a year and really, really think about it before you make the decision to sell the bag. Because once it's gone, it's gone. <laughs> you can buy another bag. You can buy that same bag again if they still make it, but you'll never have your original bag. And even on like my Facebook groups, people have wrote posts like, oh, I sold this bag. Now I miss it. I want it back. Is anybody selling one? Anybody? Anybody at all? Have a bag in our collection that maybe we've had for a few years and like, oh, this bag isn't in style at all anymore. You know, I never use it. I'm going to sell it. And then like next season it's in again. And I feel that is the cycle with designer handbags. It's, you know, one year they're in, then they're out, then maybe two years later they're in, then they're out again. It's just a cycle. And these bags, the designer bags are made so well, they will last you for so, so many years. So there's no point in selling them if you don't have to. Literally one of the worst feelings to have that regret and that like longing for the bag that you sold it's just a really, really ugly feeling. So if you are not a thousand percent sure that you want to sell that bag, don't sell it. If you've made any of these mistakes, it's okay. I've made them too. Trust me, there are so many other people out there that have made these mistakes as well. I hear about it all the time on my purse blogs and forums that I'm on, you know, oh, I did this again. Oh, I impulse bought that. We've all been there, we've all done it. No worries. I don't wanna end this video on a sad note, but like, honestly, I miss that Chanel bag. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you on my next video.